The first thing you will notice about the Peer Control version 3 is the big aluminium plate on the top side. The purpose of this plate is to transfer the heat from the stepper drivers to the outside. You might know that the style and step stick drivers are used inside the controller. Depending on the supply voltage and current limit, the stepper drivers and even the steppers themselves will generate heat. This behavior is totally normal for such components. To keep the temperature as low as possible, the stepper drivers are set to a current limit of 0.6 amps. With the standard supply voltage of 12 volts, the drivers and stepper motors will keep cool and only warm up a little bit. But in some cases and applications, you might want to use a higher supply voltage or maybe a higher stepper current. In those cases, the drivers and stepper motors will heat up very quickly. To transfer the heat out of the controller housing, the stepper drivers are connected to an aluminium plate, which will dissipate the heat outside of the housing. Here you can see how the design looks like. On top of each driver there is a small aluminium cube, which is connected with a thin adhesive tape to the driver surface. On top of the aluminium cube there is a flexible thermal pad. This was chosen to compensate for all tolerances and ensure a complete contact to the aluminium carbon plate. Between all those parts, adhesive tape was used to ensure best surface contact and heat transfer. Keep this in mind if you ever need to open up the controller. The top cover plate will always stick to the drivers. You should have some tone adhesive tape for replacement if you want to open up the controller. On the top side you will find a screw which is larger than the other ones. Beneath the screw there is a hole which leads you to a potentiometer. This is used to adjust the camera output voltage. There will be a separate video on how to adjust this voltage. On this side of the controller you will find a 15 pin sub D connector. This one is used for additional functions like end switches or anything else you might want to connect to your Teensy. Some pins of the connector are already connected to the Teensy. The other ones are free and you have to solder some cables depending on your individual task. You can find and download the pin layout on the website. With the version 3 of the controller, it is also possible to use a PlayStation 4 controller. It enables a faster and easier setup with multiple access. The connection with the PlayStation controller is enabled via a USB Bluetooth dongle. The USB connection can also be used to connect other USB devices like keyboards and joysticks, but those functions are not able yet. The connections for the stepper motors can be found on two sides of the controller. The default axes are X, Y and Z. For the panorama mode, it is important that you choose X as pan and Y as tilt. The Z axis is usually the slider. The configuration of the other axis is not defined and can be chosen depending on your choice. One important warning at this point. Never plug in or remove a stepper cable while the controller is connected to a power supply. This might damage the stepper drivers and other components of the controller. On this side, you will find the most items. On the upper right corner, there is the micro USB connector of the Teensy 3.6. This one is used if you need to make a firmware update or want to connect the controller to your computer. In the lower right corner, there is a red push button. If the app stops working or if the movement must be cancelled, you can always stop the stepper motion by pressing this button. This will also disable the stepper power and reset the Teensy. After you have pressed this button, you will need to restart the Android app completely to continue working. The controller offers two different modes for triggering. You can set up the controller to do the interval and trigger your camera. This is the standard mode which is used for most applications. But you also can connect the external push button and trigger manually. This is recommended for stop motion shooting, where you don't have a fixed interval and have to trigger manually. You can also connect your camera via a hot shoe adapter to this input. When you now trigger your camera with the camera shutter button, the controller will notice this and do the motion according to your settings. This feature is described in a different video in detail. As mentioned, for most applications you want that the controller triggers your camera automatically. In this case, connect a shuttle release cable to this 2.5mm serial audio jack. Most remote triggers use the same cables, so suitable shuttle release cables are available for most cameras.
One unique feature of the Pure Control is the built-in voltage regulator to supply your camera with power. This is necessary if you are planning to do some longer shots or have a large amount of pictures. In this case, one single battery pack in your camera would not be enough for the whole shot. For most DSLR cameras, you will be able to buy battery pack adapters, which are usually used to supply the camera with a power adapter. The supply voltage can be adjusted up to 10 volt. Always make sure that you don't set the voltage too high. Most cameras will have a certain voltage limit. If you go over this limit, you will damage your camera. There will be another video on how to adjust this voltage. This is the main power connector. This is a 5 pin mini XLR, so you won't be able to accidentally plug it in into the stepper sockets or the 3 pin camera voltage output socket. The standard supply voltage is 12 volt. The controller has a second power supply socket. If you want to power your camera with the built in voltage regulator, it is recommended to use a second battery or power supply. Some cameras have a really high power consumption during live view and shooting. If you are using only one battery to power the camera and the stepper motors at the same time, this could lead to problems. Most batteries and power banks are not capable of delivering a such high current amount in a short time. So your camera might not get enough power and will not work. To prevent this from happening, you should use a second battery or power supply when you are planning to power your camera over the controller. With this switch, you can choose how the camera voltage regulator is supplied. If you set it to 1, this means that you only have one power supply. This will supply the controller, stepper motors and your camera. As mentioned earlier, it is recommended to use a second power supply if you want to power your camera over the controller. In this case, set the switch to 2. This will separate the camera voltage regulator from the rest of the board. The power supply, which you plug in into the second power input, will now only supply the camera voltage regulator and nothing else.